When you think of the glitz of early Hollywood, who comes to mind? Greta Garbo, Clark Gable, maybe Betty Davis? Well, it's true, those were the stars of the day, but behind the silver screen, now that was a different story, one of Jewish immigrants building an industry. Here's a clip from a new documentary called Hollywoodism, Jews, Movies, and the American Dream. Harry Warner, who with three of his brothers brought sound to the motion picture, was born in Poland. I was Jack Warner, youngest of the Warner clan, and then the senior member of the film famed brothers. Also from Poland was Samuel Goldwyn, born Goldfish. Although Goldwyn never ran a major studio, he was perhaps the biggest and best known of the independent Hollywood producers. Universal founder Carl Lemley came from a small town in Germany. Louis B. Mayer, who gave us the glory years of the MGM studio, was born in a Russian Jewish village. William. International award-winning documentary director and producer Simsa Yakovich is the man who made this film and he is with me now. So your thesis is that these Jewish men invented Hollywood, but why is this a revelation? Well, it's a revelation because the word Jew and Hollywood has, is kind of an incendiary combination. Uh, unfortunately, anti-Semites have used the combination to say the Jews control Hollywood, they're all sitting in a little room and they're plotting how to destroy our minds. So the Jewish reaction is to say, no, 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 we haven't, you know, like Sony owns us and Coca-Cola and we didn't, we di we, we're not doing it. So as a result, nobody talks about the people who founded it mm. in a truthful way, right? Because people have talked about it in an untruthful way, nobody talks in a truthful way. And the truth is that every one of the studios, Paramount, Universal, MGM, was founded not just by a Jew, but by an immigrant Jew or the son of an immigrant Jew, in the case of Columbia Pictures by Harry Cohen. And the irony is that these people all started life within like a 500 mile radius of each other, not in the American Midwest, but in Poland and Ukraine, came to America with these fantasies of what America will be like. When America wasn't what they thought it would be, they ended up in Hollywood, 12 miles from each other, 20 miles maximum from each other, and they took their fantasies, their Polish, Ukrainian, Russian fantasies, put them up on celluloid in an attempt to reinvent themselves as Americans and in the process they reinvented America. They convinced us that the America on Hollywood pictures is actually the America that exists. Well there goes my interview. You've answered every single question I was going to ask you. But these guys, these men, these six men, uh, you say they all came from about 500 miles radius yeah. of each other and they came to America. They're all immigrants. But what else did they have in common personality wise? Well, as in, the, I mean, at that time, at the turn of the century, there were about two million Jews arrived on the shores in Ellis, Ellis Island. Some of them actually made it Canada first, and then the United States, mm -hmm. uh, like Louis B. Mayer. From he grew up in New Brunswick. No kidding. Yeah, he was a junk man in New Brunswick, and he, he he was a double alien by being to Canada. He was so frustrated in his fantasies of America that when he arrived to America, because America wasn't to them the United States, it wasn't a geographic location. It, it was, was a freedom. fantasy. So when he got there, he said he couldn't remember his own birth date, and he celebrated his birth date on July 4th. That's how much they wanted mm. to be Americans, you know, and. What these guys had in common, because they didn't know each other, but they, they were driven and they were to make it. And they made, people think they made their bucks in Hollywood. They made their bucks before Hollywood. These guys came with nothing. In their 20s, they were millionaires then. How did they end up in, in uh, movies? Because these men were not cerebral men. Well, you know, the stereotype of these guys is, you know, money grabbing, cigar chomping, ass pinching moguls who got in the way of the real artists. Our thesis is, no, the underlying vision of Hollywood to this day is the vision that they brought to the movies, their fantasies. But they, they still might have been cigar chomping ass pinching guys, but they, they did make th the fantasy happen. They were that, but they also masqueraded at that. They, did, they were people who were driven by a desire not to be who they were. Isn't These were not the Jews irony? who wanted to be Jews. But See, that seems to be such a huge irony that, the, that their whole life was built on erasing their past, so to speak, and, and denying their Jewishness. Absolutely, and that's what made it so universal, because the idea of reinventing yourself is a 20th century idea. Before you were born, you were a member of this tribe, this family, this nation. The idea that you could kind of repackage yourself is, is a 20th century idea. They took this idea, this kind of 
which was a sub-theme in America. It wasn't the main thing. America they arrived to was not to America where the little guy could make it. That's Hollywood's America. That's a Jewish fantasy. That's a Jewish assimilation It's fantasy. a Jewish reality. They did it. They, they did and they didn't, and this is the tragedy. They, on the one hand, they built this fantasy world. They built this incredible value structure and constellation of values that we all live within. Mm -hmm. We believe in the little guy making it to the top, the outsider becoming an insider, the little white picket fences. But in their own lives, they couldn't escape who they were. It constantly came back and haunted them. One of the points we make in the film is the House on American Activities Committee, which became famous under McCarthy, mm. people think of it as an anti-communist thing and happened to take some Jews along the way because Jews were involved in the communist movement. We make the argument and we show clip films that no one's seen before that it was an anti-Semitic committee that went out to remind these, to put these Hollywood Jews back into their place, to remind them that uh, they're a bunch of kikes and nothing more. Can I and, ask you something? You are... And I put those words in quotation marks because we reveal the tragedy of these people trying not to be who they were and these anti-Semites like Cossacks coming down and driving them back down. You are a disturber. Uh, something disturber. I am. You are. You. Uh, I mean, there is um, anti-Semitism now is starting to to swell up again around the world. And you make a film at this time, you're just going to stir it up more. Why do you do it? Why? Well, yeah, talking Look about at the Jews smile. And there all. you go. <laughs> because I think we should tell the truth. We shouldn't be afraid. If nobody mentioned that there's blacks in the NBA, the only people that would talk about it would be, you know, racists. And then, you know, look at this white player. And, you know, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If the Jews made a contribution, let's talk about it. If, the, if, if, if we understand this fantasy, for me, by understanding this fantasy structure, it actually made me feel better about myself. I, you know, I had p people who, a lot of people, you know, I've had some people watch the film who are Italian or, 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 or Serbs, and they got moved. They were crying. Why? Because they came to these shores trying to reinvent themselves, trying to be something other than what they were. Mm -hmm. And by actually understanding this little bubble of Hollywood that we all live inside, mm -hmm. we can't even see outside of I it. I want to show a clip. Y okay. you, you start understanding who you are. Let me, sh let me show this clip and then I have a question, okay? So watch this. Here's a clip. Anyone anywhere could identify with so many of the themes of American movies, one of which was the idea of the outsider, which was a Jewish theme. Jews being outsiders, making films about outsiders. You see this even in monster pictures. I mean, King Kong. Uh, there is a film about, you know, an outsider. Uh, and yet, it's the monster, if you want to call King Kong that, with whom the audience sympathizes. So your theory in the movie is that there's a lot of genre films that we're familiar with, like the King Kong, uh, Frankenstein horror movies, and um, like the shootout westerns. Those genres are really um, something uh, relating to the Jewish identity. Is that is that true? Absolutely. If you want to understand those things, there's like kind of, if you want to decode them, if you want to deconstruct them, uh, we're going to make people look. We've got some of the classics of American of film, of American cinema, about over a hundred clips that we make people look in a brand new way. For example, the Western. When you think of the classic Western, there's these little villagers and they're vulnerable and outside the village is these bad guys on horseback with high leather boots and they come in and they rape and they pillage. Did this happened in Arizona? This was a pogrom. This was a massacre of Jews. That happened in the time, Ukraine. But I'm going to just fight huh? with you here for a second. I don't think that those heads of studios are the ones that are coming up with these creative ideas. They're the businessmen. It's the writers because and the directors. Because you bought into the cinephile view of the world, which is the direct, hair director, really. The studio heads hired those directors. They approved all of the uh, stories. Mm -hmm. They didn't like it. The story didn't have a happy ending. Out it went. If it wasn't about a... You couldn't have... Look, let, let, we coined the term pre-Jewish and post-Jewish American cinema. Pre-Jewish cinema was headed, was in New Jersey around the Edison people who invented this technology. Look at their films. Mm -hmm. The greatest film ever made by those guys was Birth That's of good. a Nation by D.W. Griffith. It's studied in every university or film class. Everybody says, look at the camera's movie. Nobody talks about what the content of the film was. The content was a celebration of the KKK. Can you imagine any director being able to make a film in Hollywood to this day that celebrates the KKK? 